Hello. 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 My name's Mark. My name is Daniel. Nice to meet you. Hi, Daniel. Nice to meet you too. How are you? I'm fine. Good. Now, can I take your identity? Here you go. Thanks very much. Great. Now, we're going to start with your topic. Of what course. have you chosen to talk about? I've chosen about to talk the history of mobile phones. Ooh, okay. Well, tell me first about the pioneers of the mobile phone. Well, the first pioneer was Dr. Martin Cooper of Motorola. He invented a mobile rig, completely portable, and uh, it wasn't hand size, it weighed 40 kilograms. Like this? A brick of foam, of course. Uh-huh. It had a huge antenna, and uh, it was made of wires. The electricity was wires. And was it expensive? Yes, it was the first mobile phone. What about the in the beginning one? Well, in the beginning, two-way radios, known as mobile rigs, were installed in taxi cabs, police cruisers and ambulances. They were not mobile phones because they were not normally connected to, to the national telephone network. So why were they invented? Was it just to have fun? No, it was another way of communicating. Between who? Between or? two people or more. Okay. So it wasn't in, they didn't invent it to to help uh, the police or the uh, ambulances. They knew thought of that in the early years. Mm-hmm. The first uh, mobile phone was a Motorola Dynatac. It actually looked like a, a rig, a mobile rig. I told you already, it was huge. It had an antenna. Then they resized some mobile phones to nine kilograms. Mm-hmm. They were really heavy. So that's now this big? Yes, a brick of phone actually. It's still a brick. And uh, did you have to carry it, did you have to use electricity to make it work? Or did well, you have a battery? Well, uh, the first uh, rigs were with wires, but the Motorola Dynatac was completely portable. Mm-hmm. It, it used no wires and uh, you, can, you could carry it and go like this, like the now, well, like the phone's now. So you didn't have to use it like a normal telephone? No. Mm-hmm. What about mobile phone design between 1973 and 2009? Well, uh, the design uh, changed a lot because the, the first mobile phones were huge. Mm-hmm. They, they were heavy, they didn't have a display. Unlike now, now uh, mobile phones can take a picture, play a video or run uh, thousands of applications from their menus. Mm-hmm. Nowadays mobile phones even have games, bigger entertainment for the kids. Mm-hmm. And what about the second generation mobile phones? Well, in the second generation, companies like IDEN invented mobile phones which could send an SMS. The first SMS was sent in the 1991st in the UK to a machine, actually. And uh, two years later, two men exchanged an SMS. Mm-hmm. And do you, think, do you think that second generation phones were a big step forward? Yes, not step, a huge leap forward. Mm-hmm. Why? What, what could you do with a second generation phone that you didn't have to do on a first generation? First, in the second generation phone, there were screens now. There were big screens which allowed you to see what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Then the mobile phones were resized, they were actually hand sized now, and they were really light. So, Third generation mobile phones, we have these today. Yes, today. Uh, companies in Japan, Tokyo, like NTT Docomo, invented uh, the first touchscreen mobile phones. You know about that, don't you? And slider mobile phones with bigger protection. What do you think might happen in the future with mobile phones? <laughs> well, well, it's a bit crazy, but uh, in the future, I think mobile phones will float in air. Really? And uh, they will be all touch screens. There will be a, bl- a big screen and we'll be a touch and it will float in there. So we won't have to put them in our pockets? Yes. Mm. In a pocket, then when you want to get it out, you just throw it in the air and it starts flowing. Mm. Do you think this could happen in 10 years time? Yes. Think it might? Yes. Do you think it might happen in 5 years time? No. It's a huge step for mankind. Okay, all right. It's a thing we're not ready for. Okay. All right, well, thank you for talking to me about mobile phones. 
Now, let us talk about something different. Okay. Let's talk about learning a foreign language. Now, you've learnt English. Yes. Mm -hmm. What do you have to do to be a good English student? Well, you have to learn everything you've been taught in class. You have to write your words in your notebook so you can remember them and then use them when you talk to somebody. Is it, do you have to talk to learn English? Yes, of course. I think so. Why? Well, uh, we uh, from Bulgaria don't speak very much English here, but I know uh, English since five years old. And uh, I uh, used to talk a lot, uh, a lot uh, of uh, English, and I watched a lot of cartoons. That's where, that's where I learned English. Mm -hmm. And so, have, do you think you need to watch English in its original language? Yes, of course. Uh, my uh, teacher from my school uh, told me uh, told me that uh, I should uh, watch uh, at least half an hour TV, English language, no uh, subtitles. Mm -hmm. Every day. Every day. Mm -hmm. At least half an hour, or play video games when uh, where they talk a lot of English. And when you're watching English language TV, do you feel that you're studying? Yes, actually, it's uh, studying. If uh, you learn some new, new words, then you can uh, put them in your topic, like uh, now, of course, uh -huh. which I have done a few times. Mm -hmm. I have done many projects, and uh, all of this is from watching TV mm -hmm. and uh, learning from my books. Uh -huh. So do you have to study grammar to be perfect? I think grammar is important as well. Mm -hmm. The grammar is very important. And in, let's imagine, in 10 years' time, do you think you will have the ability of a native speaker? Yes, I think so. If I study a lot, mm -hmm. if I don't stop studying, mm -hmm. I'll be able to talk like you now. Hmm. Okay. Let's talk about, uh, let's also talk about health and fitness. Now, um, is exercise very important to you? Yes, I play basketball once or twice a week. Mm -hmm. Do you play any sports? Uh, yes, I go to the gym and uh, I swim, uh, but I don't play football and I don't dance. Well, I expected for you to play football at least. Yeah, uh, I have a problem with, uh, with my foot, so it hurts when I play football. Um, what about you? Do you have any? Do you have any special sports that you really, really like? Basketball. Mm -hmm. I like football before, but I saw I'm not very good at it. So. Ah, okay. So for you, is it better to do? You, is it better to watch basketball or to play it? To play it, of course. Why? Well, to play it because you can learn a lot of new stuff. Well, you can learn from watching as well, but uh, I think when you play basketball, you realize that you're actually good at this. Mm -hmm. Now, I've never played basketball. What do you have to do to be a good basketball player? Pass a lot. You have to pass, you have to shoot right, you have to know a lot of stuff. Do you have to be tall to be a good basketball player? You see, I'm not tall, but uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are very tall. You have to be tall to play very well. And one day you might be a professional basketball player? I don't think so. No? No. Mm. Why not? I don't know. I'm not uh, that good at it. But I try. But if you practice? Yes, you if might I be. practice, I might be. But mm. I have to practice a lot. Okay. Uh -huh. um, and so in five years' time, do you think you will play a different sport? Do you think you'll still play basketball or do you think you'll stop all sport? I don't know. I'm not very sure. Let's wait for the future to see. Okay. All right. Well, that's it. We finished. Thank you very much. It was very nice to talk to you. Me too. And enjoy the rest of your day. Okay. Thank you. Bye. You too.